Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and first of all we would like to thank you for all the support since Nolly Heads came out. Um, today Arno is going to be touching on one of the most important aspects of Nolly Heads. Welcome back guys. Since the launch of Nolly Heads about six, seven weeks ago, I've had quite a number of emails and uh, requests and uh, uh, questions about the, the features of the, of the poppers, um, the, uh, uh, how do you prepare them, and that's the one thing that, that was actually uh, featuring the most, was, was how, do you, how do you prepare the popper before you mount, mount it onto the hook. Um, besides that, a lot of other things, the whole idea behind the eyes, the idea behind the geometry on the, of, of the head, uh, those sort of things. And I'd like to, to go through the, uh, 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 all these things step by step in, in a series of videos to explain a little bit more about the design, about the, 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 the features that I built into the popper and, and obviously how to prepare it for tying. Um, because it's not just something that you take and you go and put it on a hook. Um, there's some really technical um, features that are built into the popper to to create a better looking popper, a better performing popper, and um, uh, make it easier to for the tire to to um, get the right measurements and things in place on the hook. So the one thing that I found the most was was that that the guys are asking. How do I prepare the popper for tying and, and to mount it on a hook? What do I do with it? Um, and that's very simple. And it's actually something that I took for granted because I thought, well, it's so easy to, to, to mount a popper on a hook, but, but it's, you know, I know the popper in, inside out, so, so it is easy. But for someone who, who's, who's not that experienced and so on, that, that's what this video is for. It is it's to, 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 to try and teach you how to what, what to do, where the hook needs to go through, what, what you need to do before you go and glue this thing onto the hook. Because by, by, by the time you've got glue on the hook shank and you need to slide this component on there, you've got one chance to do that. And if you don't do it right, then you're going to have a popper that's probably not going to perform the, the way it's supposed to and you're going to waste a lot of money. So, so I'm going to go through this and it's actually a very, very um, simple thing. And that's what I want to do in this video. So to start with, I've got my 3D model, the half model. And there's the, I don't know if the lighting is it's not, not the greatest here. Let me move that a little bit. So there you can see the, the popper, the shape of the popper with the eye cavity. But that's the half model. So on the inside, that's the line where the hook should follow, follow through. Now there's a marker on the front, a little round marker on the front that, that, that we, we include in the manufacturing process and then a marker right at the back. Between those two markers is where the hook shank should follow through. Now it's pretty easy to do that. So on the, um, and the more experience you get with it, the easier it will become. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you the, the long way of getting it right. So when you look at the popper, when you look at the, at the belly of the popper, you'll see there's a line right in the middle that I'm going to come closer to the camera you can you can see the line there in the middle running from the top to the bottom now that's just the guideline for you to to line the botkin up that you're going to use to stick the uh, 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 to, uh, when you stick it through to line it up and make sure you line those two holes up the right way and you can keep pushing through until you get to the other end now what I do is I, I take a thin botkin to, to make a guide hole first and then I go thicker and I do this before I even start to tie the um, tie the, the, the tail onto the hook that this is the first step I do before I start to tie the, the tail on, onto the hook and and I often do this and then I do a paint job on them bef uh, um, and let that dry but the main reason is to get that hole in the right place stretch that hole out a little bit so that it's easier to get the hook through. So you take a botkin, a thin sharp botkin, and you stick a hole through the back, line it up with that line, and it's going to come out the front. 
right there. So yeah, there you can see it's the botcon. If you can see the botcon there, it came out in the front, and it's out in the back, and and that's there you can see it's lined up with a line running through the middle. Now that gives you a guideline. The next step is to you, you want to stretch that hole a little bit because you, you, you're not going to be able to, to get a hook through there, especially on the large and the extra large where you use a 6040 and a 60 hook and sometimes an 80. Um, they've got bigger eyes and you need to get that thing to slide through there um, pretty easy in order to spread the glue properly and then to, to, to sit and dry. So take the botkin out and then you put it on, a, you take a thicker needle. I bought some some thick sewing needles and these are these are really thick needles they are more than two millimeter diameter I think and I stick that through there now I'm quite experienced with this now so 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 I often don't even use a botkin anymore I just take the thicker sewing needle and stick it through you work that through through the middle through that line so that it's sit there now this is short needle. I've got some longer needles as well. So, so when I when I tie the the medium and the small, I just leave it on the needle because the needle is thick enough to stretch that hole. Especially when I tie bass flies, um, they 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 have thinner wire, smaller eyes. So 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 that diameter is fine to get that um, hook eye through. When I tie the large and the extra large, I often go to a thicker, um, a thicker uh, metal shaft that I, that I put them on. But at this point, it, this is where I would go and do the paint job first. So I often take two or three on a needle and then go and paint them. And you can, you can rotate them when you work with an airbrush. You can take, you know, it's got a sharp tip, you can stick it in a piece of foam to dry. You can take it out later, give it a clear coat stick it in the foam again to dry. When I'm ready to tie, before I start to tie, I take them off the needle, especially not the small and the medium, only the large and the extra large because of the thicker, um, the wire diameter of the hooks. I take them off the needle and I take a thicker, this is about a three millimeter metal shaft that I bought from a hardware store. This one was cut shorter. And I work that through the hole to stretch it even more. You work that through to the middle there. And I am busy looking at, at, at making um, some needles with, with wooden handles so it's easier and you won't hurt your hand. Um, it's very, very early in this whole project and it's uh, really opened a can of worms with this, with this whole thing. So um, those things will come. But then you stick it's through there and that will stretch it a little bit more. So by the time, and then now you can leave this, you put this down, you leave it and you go and tie your tails. And then you go and you, uh, and the, the, the other thing that you, you don't need to do, you don't need to heat the, the, the needle up to, to, uh, um, to get that hole through there. Just take a normal botkin and stick a hole through there. Um, now you go and tie the popper and if you watch the videos that I've posted already you'll notice that that right at the end before I slide the the, the, the head on I take a piece of thin uh, this is just a piece of yellow the lying here thin two millimeter foam that I cut in a two millimeter strip I tie it on top of the hook I tie it on top of the hook all the way to the front of the tail then I wrap uh, I glue that and then I wrap it forward and I tie it off that creates a bit of a shock absorber and it creates a, it's a very nice filler so that you know that popper sits properly on the hook. And then you, you glue the front half of that. Once you've glued it and it's in the vise and you've glued it, then you go, you slide that off and you can stick the hook through there. Then you've got that wider or, or bigger hole there and it's easier to run the hook through that hole and get it out in the right spot. Then you know you're gonna be safe, you, you're safe to get it out in exactly the right spot where it's supposed to be. So this is the one tip. Um, I'll definitely post some more tips um, on the eye features, the geometry, a few other things on the popper head. Uh, but please use this. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if it's helpful. 
please follow the channel for more videos like this and some more tying videos i know i've tied, tied a few videos um, but there's some more tails that, that i'm working on that we're going to be doing um, some paint jobs that i'd like to share with you guys and um, everything available for for homemade poppers and that is how you prepare a gnarly head before you glue it onto a hook thank you guys for watching the video i hope you learned a lot out of that and please smash the like button and hit the subscribe bye